Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to It's Poppin' where we talk about everything pop-up camper related. Just a quick aside, if you guys enjoy these videos or even find value of it in any of our how-to videos, please consider subscribing. Alright, so welcome to part six of the free pop-up camper renovation series. Man, I can't believe it's part six already. Um, but anyways, just to give you a quick idea of what we're going to be doing on this, um, on this video, it's probably, and in my opinion, the most important thing you can do for a pop-up camper, and that is um, recocking all of like the seams and edges and anywhere that water could possibly get into your pop-up. I don't know how many times I've seen, and I've probably told you guys this before, but I don't know how many times I've seen um, used pop-up campers that are just beyond repair because of water damage getting in the roof or getting in the in the front boxes or in the edges. It's just, it can totally ruin an otherwise good camper if water gets in. So i um, gonna be caulking a lot of the uh, edges and seams anywhere where water could get in and then um, butyl taping under um, some of those spots where appropriate. Another thing, gonna be putting some lap sealant um, and redoing the lap sealant around that roof vent. It's looking pretty cracked, so definitely need to redo that. This is gonna be my first time using lap sealant, so we'll see how that goes. Hopefully gonna fix the awning pole that was broken um, and get that back in working order. And then uh, I also wanna kinda put this thing through a waterproofing test once everything's all sealed up. Um, so we'll see how that goes, <laughs> make sure there's no leaks or anything like that. And while we're doing that, I'm going to make sure all of like the appliances that I haven't tested already are in working order. Fingers crossed that everything kicks on and works like it should. So um, we'll see though. <laughs> That'd be really bad if, if we got through all this work and then those some things don't work and we have to, uh, you know, do part part seven of fixing more stuff, but hopefully not. Um, and then after all that, um, I'm going to repack the bearings and that's probably once again, in my opinion, also one of the most important things you can do for a pop-up. Um, if you don't, you know, repack those gear, bear, uh, bearings, wheel bearings and get new grease in them. Um, they have the tendency to overheat and I suppose that could probably cause, you know, um, wheel failure. I, I don't know um, if you guys have ever seen photos of um, some of those campers where the wheels have blown out and they like take chunks of the wheel well out and the side of the camper and they just, it, I don't know, probably, probably totals them. All right guys, so that is all to come. So I did a little experimenting right on this corner to uh, get an idea of what I was dealing with. And honestly, it looks like um, this might peel up real nicely. I might have to use, you know, the, the scraper or even uh, s some of the razor blades to get a little bit more off. But my plan is to clean, clean it up as best I can so I can lay down a nice new bead of uh, silicone caulk. Um, I don't plan on doing 100% everything. So, for example, that uh, bead on the, on the roof here on the back looks great to me. So I'm not even going to touch that. But um, these roof lines all the way to the front, I'm going to redo um, because uh, this is kind of sinking in there. And then also I want to do each of the four corners um, where they have uh, these guys. I don't know what you call them, but I do know that they have butyl tape under them and then the seams are then caulked and these look kind of rough. So I want to redo these on all four corners. And then I'm also going to dress up a lot of the seams around. For example, the uh, door is going into the box. Um, I think I'm going to try and do something with the refrigerator area. And then these guys through here. Um, I'll kind of, kind of evaluate each of them as we go. But I haven't forgotten to do our water inlet valve uh, cover thing here. Oh, and I also want to do the wheel wells. Um, I believe those have butyl tape on them as well, but I can't remember for sure. But uh, 
I'm gonna redo the wheel wells. Now here's one thing I want to address. Um, at least looking online, and everybody's got an opinion online, right? I guess I do too. <laughs> but a lot of people debate going for the silicone caulk versus something like, stand by, something like a dipore lap sealant, whether it's self-leveling or the, or the non-self-leveling stuff. Regardless, I know a lot of people will recommend like a, a lap sealant type thing for resealing their pop-up campers versus the silicone. Um, the manual for this specific pop-up camper says 100% silicone, so that's what I'm gonna go with. It's the same thing that the StarCraft manual says. It, it recommends 100% silicone. So that's what I'm gonna stick with. I'm gonna stick with the manual um, on this one. However, your, your camper might differ from my camper, but that's why I'm going with the silicone. So just a small aside. So guys, I don't know if I've shown you this, but one of these box corner caps, I guess you might call it, is pretty smashed up. So I actually have one of these on order. Um, so hopefully we'll be getting a new one of these soon so I can just completely replace this. Um, but also I want to take off these, um, I guess, I don't know, corner, corner of the box seals. And I don't know if any of you guys have taken these out, but they generally have a, a screw right down here. And then that, that allows you to take this, this kind of inner plastic part off. And then that allows you access to a series of screws that run up and down the corner here. And uh, once the screws are out, then you can take the metal pieces off that uh, are on the sides here. And, um, and there's gonna be some beetle tape under there. Got the corner edge piece off here and it's not too bad at all. Maybe a little bit of water was getting in at the bottom. You can kind of see that discoloration right there, but on the, on the whole, it's uh, pretty good. So the plan is to clean up all this silicone slash butyl tape combo right here. Um, and of course, replace all the butyl tape that's in here with some fresh stuff. You can see it's kind of getting nasty at the bottom there. And, uh, completely redo that. And we're gonna do that for each of these corners and hopefully none of them are too bad. But uh, this back one is uh, looking just fine for being uh, 13 years old or so. Well guys, here is the result after scraping, oh, maybe 95% of uh, all the butyl tape and caulk off the corner of the camper. And then of course I also um, scraped out, uh, out the um, I don't know, metal, metal edge piece that contains a lot of that butyl tape. So the next step will be to uh, throw some, some butyl tape through this whole channel. And I got the one inch variety um, for going in here. And then when I get to, once I get the beetle tape in, I will of course uh, throw that back up, um, screw it back in, put our, um, our plastic guy that covers up all of, uh, all of the uh, screws back in, and then uh, lay down a nice you know, bead of uh, silicone caulk at the edges to uh, seal these corners back up nicely. Alright guys, here's the finished result. Um, did the whole top of the roof here. And of course, through the corners. Here is one of the front corners. And uh, did around the 
uh, front box doors down along that seam. Um, did around the refrigerator and I also rebutyl taped um, the refrigerator as well. Um, here's that wheel well. I think that turned out pretty good. And the heater and then the um, water, um, I guess that's the sink drain actually. And then uh, I kind of cheated a little bit on the shower just because it was so hard to access right on that side, but I did the other half of it. I left the city water uh, connection, and but uh, here's that fill hose area that I had to redo. And around the um, electric cord and then uh, around the light as well. So that, uh, that wraps that up. Actually, you know what? I forgot to do that little crack right there. So I'm gonna go do that quick. But other than that, uh, that uh, should be the whole camper siliconed off. All right guys, new day, new mini project. So I was taking a look at um, the roof end here and um, as you can see on this side, there's that little bit of cracking that was kind of going all the way around the around the um, sealant on the roof end here. So what I decided to do is take all that up and uh, I'm going to redo it. Um, and how I know I kind of just went on a little tangent about um, that I'm not going to be using the lap sealant, but um, I am going to use the lap sealant for the roof vent. Um, whereas I, of course, use the silicone for, um, for all the joints and seams uh, throughout the camper. And this is the, the self-leveling type. Um, so we'll see how that goes, but I'm going to get all the, the rest of this um, taken off and um, cleaned up. And I'm going to throw down this uh, sealant and we'll see how it works. Alright, we'll see how this um, this lap sealant turns out. I think the important thing is that all the seams and screws are covered. In case you're thinking of doing this uh, yourself, I probably used, oh, all the way, so I have about that much left, so maybe 80% of the tube just for that vent, so uh, that, if that gives you an idea of how much you might need. Um, and it, is, it does have a, definitely an odor to it, so I'm going to open up the garage and, and vent this out. So be forewarned, it's uh, kind of smelly. By the way, here is all of the caulk and butyl tape and every other thing that I took off the, the camper that got replaced. <laughs> Looks like it all stuck together at the bottom. Well guys, here is the lap sealant, the uh, self-leveling lap sealant after, I don't know, maybe 20 hours? Not quite a full day. And it didn't level out as much as I kind of hoped it was, or hoped it would, but that might be for a couple of reasons. Um, a, it was kind of an old tube of lap sealant, and B, um, probably my technique, and probably more so B than A. But um, this is what it looks like. Here is the new, um, I guess, uh, canopy um, pole. So what I did is I went on online and bought a four foot um, aluminum post or pole or whatever you want to call it. And this is, let's see if that, if you, if you can read that, it's um, uh, seven eighths inch outer diameter. Oh shoot, and I'm not sure exactly what the inner diameter was. But what I was able to do is I was able to take the old fittings from the old, old poles that look kind of like this and remove them from this aluminum uh, tube and then transfer them in. 
It was a bit of a tight fit, so what I did was I sanded down both the uh, plastic piece and the inside of the tube on either end, and I was able to almost press fit them in. Now, I did have a little trouble on this end. As you can see, it's like, oh shoot, maybe a sixteenth of an inch I couldn't fit, but at that point it started kind of flexing this ball, and I definitely didn't want to uh, break that off. And besides, this pole nests inside one of the other poles, and it locks in with this end. So this is kind of a variable length pole anyway, so I didn't think the risk was versus the reward of getting that all the way in there. So this was definitely a much more uh, economical uh, option as opposed to buying a whole new awning, because as you guys know, those are pricey. And um, this pole was, I think, I think $27 including shipping, 15 for the pole, and then a whole, whole $12 for shipping. Well guys, this is the first time we've had the pop-up out of the uh, garage and we have it set up in the driveway so I'm gonna run it, it through a few tests um, I think you guys know this already but like all the lights work air conditioner works um, propane uh, detector works all the outlets work but uh, I do want to test some other stuff um, here we have the fridge and what I did was I took one of our freezer um, thermometers and uh, we'll see how long it takes for the fridge to cool down um, fingers crossed it works but just for a before reference I think it's reading at oh maybe 75 degrees which seems plausible so I'm gonna throw it in the fridge and get her turned on and we'll see how it does all right so the refrigerator is cooling down hopefully fingers crossed right um, while I was out there I turned on the propane and I got the inside stove hooked up and looks like it's working pretty well all right yeah so all three burners are looking good pleased with that well guys I learned something new about these furnaces um, I finally got this to kick on and the reason for that was let me show you, let me show you over here it's right behind this tape over here but there's this on off switch and it's hard to see tucked back in there but it's right back in there and if that's not on of course the heater won't click on all right guys so i got the hose connected so the city water essentially and we'll see how much this sputters but hopefully not too bad and don't worry i didn't forget to open up the drain valve all right cool well so I'm just gonna take a look where all the um, PEX tubing is and I'm not seeing any um, any leaks or anything coming through here I want to see make sure that shower looks like it's okay we'll take a look at the shower and in case you guys haven't seen one of these before what this is is one of those pressure reducers and that just makes sure the city water coming in isn't at too high of a pressure to damage your internal plumbing all right just a few notes I can see that it's leaking from right here so I'm gonna tighten that down and then it was leaking a little bit from the bottom of the handle but shoot that's easy I'll just tighten those down and um, call it good um, next thing I want to check out is the hot water heater so I'll light that up and hopefully uh, we'll get some hot water running okay so the hot water heater is working um, it took a minute for it to kick on. I don't know if it's just because of the propane kind of needed to be primed through the lines or what, but uh, got her going and uh, hopefully that means we have some nice hot water. All right guys, so the pump stopped, um, you know, pumping now that it uh, moved all the air through the system. And you can tell it's definitely working because if I flip the water on, it flips on and when I close it, turns off stays pressurized so I'm happy with that all right guys we have a result anybody want to guess uh, on how cold the Dometic refrigerator got all right let's take a look we got down to a whole uh, 48 degrees hmm not great so I guess what they say about these that they're really more of coolers and not 
refrigerators is kind of true. So one of these corner caps finally came in um, for the top of the box that I had to replace. These are a touch big. As you can see, um, what I did is I uh, marked off where I need to cut uh, roughly to cut them down to size. So I'm going to try and do that with one of the heavy duty shears I have. We'll see how that works. Um, and then of course it just uh, gets glued and then screwed down. So this looks great now, um, but I was looking at where they had the old holes and those are just way too close to the edge. Um, so I'm going to um, pop those in and see how close they were to the edge and maybe that's part of the reason why these crack. They're just too close to the to the edge of the plastic. So I'm going to move those in a little bit, um, I don't know, towards the corner and hopefully that uh, will mitigate that problem and uh, we'll see how it goes. Here is the final result. Alright guys, I think it's time to give this thing a waterproofing test. So uh, mainly I want to test out the canvas, you know, on the windows. There shouldn't be any problems with the vinyl, you know, the rest of the, I guess, overall canvas, vinyl, um, canopy area, but uh, we'll see how they do for, for uh, waterproofness. Alright guys, so the, um, I guess, waterproofing test, or whatever you want to call it, uh, went quite well. Um, I don't see the need to add any more waterproofing to the uh, canvas on the sides of the windows. Obviously the uh, vinyl did just fine. Guys, it is wheel bearing grease day, so I'm going to be repacking these uh, wheel bearings on the Palomino. So um, good news is I discovered as I was taking the um, tire off and just taking a look at the situation uh, that we had going on for the wheel bearing grease that these were some of the, um, I guess like uh, Dexter Easy Lube um, system bearings. So that means I can use the grease gun um, and it's got a Zerk on it. I can use some of that high temp grease to repack these and it's super simple. It turned like maybe, oh, I don't know, a multi hour job into, well, let's see. I've never actually done it with the Zerk. So hopefully like 15 minutes or under. Um, and I guess the idea behind it is you uh, just pump in the new high temp grease and um, that kind of it kind of um, pushes the old grease back out towards you and then you, can, you just keep wiping that off until you see the new um, grease coming back out as well. So, All right, so here's the situation. Um, we got the grease zerk right there and to get to that um, you need to of course take off your tire and then this cover comes off here if you have one. Um, and then just this kind of rubber grommet or whatever pops off there, which gives you access to that. Pop our grease gun in and we'll see what happens. I have no idea when the last time these were greased were. All right, yeah, you can see that old grease coming out now. Alright guys, I'm pretty satisfied with that. Like I said before, definitely grab a lot of paper towels for this. Because it, it's dirty. So, you can kind of see what's, maybe, what was going on in there. Super nasty black um, grease. And then that's kind of the new stuff we got going on. So, definitely looks a lot better. Well, that is it for part six of the free pop-up camper renovation series. And that kind of leads me into what's going to be part seven. Um, we're going to finally get to that renovation, which is super exciting, that interior renovation. I'm talking about, you know, the cushions, the valances, the countertops, the flooring, um, all the painting of the cabinets, uh, what makes the, the pop-up hopefully look fantastic when it's all done. So um, just to give you some, some of my thoughts about what we're gonna do first, I think we're actually gonna tackle the cushions and kind of the curtains, all the fabric first, because 
that can kind of be independently done um, from what's going on inside the camper. So we're going to be going camping this weekend. So we're going up to the wife's parents. So um, we're going to get some awesome help with redoing um, a lot of that um, fabric work, a lot of the sewing. So we're going to try and tackle that while we're also doing some camping. And um, then once we get back, we're going to for sure start um, the first thing we're going to do for sure is we're going to prime and paint the cabinets. That's kind of what's to come, guys. Super exciting because I feel like up until this point, it's really just been getting this pop-up camper ready. Um, <laughs> if we hadn't taken everything out, like all the cushions and the curtains and everything, this could totally go camping right now. Um, I'd be 100% confident that it wouldn't leak, um, a tire wouldn't blow while we're going down the road, and it'd be totally uh, bulletproof. But uh, we want to make it look good inside too. So hopefully we'll see you at part seven of the free pop-up camper uh, series renovation, or hopefully we'll see you out there camping. <laughs> Thank you.